Look at this graph! Theory Everyone knows Nokia for their indestructible phones. However, I bet you didn't know that they were among the first to break into the genre of mobile gaming. In Finland, 1998, Danielle Armanto would work alongside a team of developers to create a Tetris-like game where a snake would circle around a box trying to eat apples to grow. The game's graphics were originally programmed directly in machine code, due to the limitations of the content needing to be one megabyte or less. Thankfully, storage limitations are a thing in the past, as phones are now able to store games with files as large as 35 gigabytes. I'm looking at you, Genshin Impact. Nevertheless, mathematicians will be the first to tell you that size doesn't matter with this 8-bit game as Snake allows for the practical use of graph theory. Graph theory is the study of objects which consists of vertices and edges and is among the more practical forms of mathematics. In graph theory, there are two ways to navigate a graph completely, paths and cycles. A path will touch every node or vertice once, and a cycle will do the same but with the additional flair of ending at the starting node. For the game Snake, we can solve it by having the snake run alongside a cycle, thus ensuring that it will never eat its own tail and also cover the complete board. This type of cycle is known as a Hamiltonian cycle. Lifting some of the cycle behind how the snake AI works, we can see the Hamiltonian cycle created. However, that's right, it just updated. Not to bore y'all, this magician has some more tricks up his sleeve. The snake game that I created uses procedural generated Hamiltonian cycles to become reactive towards the obstacles which are placed on the board. The method I used was a depth first search with backtracking. This allows for the AI to check all possible paths that the snake can take and choose the one where the most nodes are touched. As the size of the board increases, it takes longer and longer to procedurally generate these paths without creating something that follows a pattern too predictable. There are also cases where a Hamiltonian cycle cannot be found, whether because of segments being cut off from the board or an odd number of nodes existing. In this case, the AI opts to take the largest path found skipping over some tiles. Finally, I have the sneaky bit of pathfinding which allows for the snake to skip over tiles if its current size and current tile sum up to be less than the size of the board. And with all that said, let's dive into the code. To start, let's take a look at the bread and butter of this all, the Hamiltonian cycle logic. This code consists of your standard depth first search maze solving algorithm with the caveat of not ending the recursion until the longest path is found. Oh, and if you smell anything with the code, yes, I do apologize that I am raising an error. However, it was the fastest way of ending the recursion that I could think of. The path which is found by the previous code is formatted of a list of coordinates to take. While meaningful if followed exactly, we choose to transform it into a grid which shows the paths. This allows for our skipping path logic which will be implemented later. But for now, this is what the function is doing. Okay, let's take a look at the snake. Well, really, the nodes of the snake. I don't have a snake class, but instead a list of snake nodes, which I associate with my snake. After that, we need to write the code to move the snake, and it's a big one. First, we want to iterate over the snake and have the previous tail assume the position of the tail ahead of it in the list. Then, we want to find where the apple is, and if there isn't an apple, set its location somewhere off of the Hamilton cycle. After that, we look on the drawn Hamiltonian cycle to find the biggest number. This is not only useful for knowing if the snake has room to skip a few tiles, but it also serves the purpose of indicating if the snake is to go to the zeroth tile or not. Finally, we have logic to indicate whether the snake is able to skip tiles or not. How this works is that we check the moves of the node surrounding the head, and we pick the largest node that does not exceed the number of the largest path minus the length of the snake. In addition, the largest node must not be greater than the node where the apple is placed, if one is found. And ta-da! 
You too can now procedurally generate Hamiltonian cycles and a snake AI to go along them. If you want to play around with this yourself, my website can be found in the comments and descriptions below. The code is also publicly posted to my GitHub for a more in-depth look over the project. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. Till next time, y'all.